What am I supposed to expect when I take the GED math test? What is it going to look like? What is it going to do? Too many students study the wrong thing. In fact, I have students who spend years, literally years, either studying on their own or studying in classes and going in to take the test and saying nothing that I studied was on there. So I don't know if any of you guys who are with me today have had that experience, but it is frustrating. Let's go ahead and look at what really is on the GED math test. Now, this is my summary of the main most important things. If you want a full list of everything tested on the GED, that is available for you on the testing website, ged.com. Okay, they'll tell you every single problem type that could show up on the map. But this is my summary of the things that come up most often and the most important things. The first thing you need to know is the GED is not a computation test. What am I talking about? I have a lot of students who dedicate a whole lot of time to memorizing all these algorithms, these step-by-step -step processes, how to add and subtract fractions, how to multiply and divide decimals, how to do percents, negative numbers, and they spend years, literally years, uh, doing that and then going to test and go, oh my gosh, there was only like one or two problems that were like that and I was not prepared. So it's not a computation test. It's not testing how many processes you remember. There's only five questions where you're not gonna have a calculator and maybe two or three of those are gonna be computation, just straight up computation problems. So do not devote all your times to memorizing the steps. The rest of the test, which is like 40 plus questions, you are gonna have a calculator the whole time. The calculator can do your computation. So what are you supposed to be doing? You're supposed to be doing some mathematical reasoning. We have to be math thinkers. We have to understand what we're looking at and why we do it or we will never pass this test. So what do we need to know how to do? Well, first of all, I said 40 plus of those questions, you get a GED calculator. So you better know how to use the calculator. Okay, you guys, calculator we get is a TI, that's Texas Instruments, 30XS Multi-view. Be really careful. A lot of students go into stores that I won't name and come out with a similar calculator that's not the same. TI30XS2. Don't get that one. Make sure you have the multi-view. And I highly recommend that you purchase a handheld one. They're usually less than 20 bucks in order that you can get some practice. Uh, and what skills do you need to know how to master on the calculator? Well, you need to be able to do negative numbers. So you guys pick up your calculator and look at it for me. You should see that there's both a minus sign and a negative sign on your calculator. We have to know when to use which one. A lot of times students aren't sure and they end up getting calculator errors from typing the wrong one. So super important we can tell the difference there. Another skill we need to master is how to input fractions. That shows up on the GED a lot. A lot of students are like, oh my god, there were so many fraction problems. Yeah, but they were almost all in the algebra section or the word problem section, meaning you could have done the fractions on your calculator if you know how to use it. Percents. Percents are another area that students really struggle with, and this calculator has percent buttons converting to percent exponents and roots. So when I talk exponents, I'm talking those little floating numbers, also known as powers. And when I talk roots, I'm talking the, those little checkmark houses, the radicals. Uh, so you need to know how to do both of those in your GED calculator. Conversions. You guys know what I mean when I say the word conversion? Like converting decimals to fractions. That's a great example. Converting decimals to fractions is an example. So what am I talking about when I say I'm converting from a decimal to a fraction? What am I doing? Changing from one equivalent form of a number to another. Equivalent, equal. So a lot of students, they'll get like three quarters out of their calculator and then they'll look on the answer sheets and they'll be like, oh no, all the answers are in decimal form. I broke my calculator. I broke math. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, guys, there's equivalent forms of numbers. There's a decimal that's equal or equivalent to a fraction form and so on and so forth. So we have to know how to convert back and forth either by hand or in our calculator. You, and another thing you need to know how to do is to switch modes. Um, our calculator behaves differently depending what mode it's in. For the GED, you need to be able to go through classic mode to math mode. They call it math print. Depending on what question you're answering, one or the other might be more useful. So we'll be practicing that as we work together. But another thing you need to be able to click between is the normal and the scientific mode. And this comes up on both the math test and the science test. And then scientific notation uh, is another thing that you should want to know how to do in your calculator. Hey, will you be showing us how to use this like as we go through problems? 
Yes, exactly. I'm not going to okay. teach a specific okay. class on the calculator. I have that up on the crash course. If you guys wanted to check that out, I have eight videos on these eight skills or whatever it is, seven videos on these seven skills up on the crash course already. But what I will be doing is as we encounter practice problems where I would use a calculator, I have one to pull up on my screen. I can show you the buttons. What do we need to be able to do for our test? We need to know how to use the calculator. We also need to be familiar with that formula sheet. I have it linked here so we can go see it. But I just Google GED formula sheet and here it is. A lot of great stuff on this formula sheet. The whole first half of it is all, almost all the geometry on the GED is on this formula sheet with only one exception. So that means a lot of students tell me, well, I'm not very good at geometry. You don't have to be good at geometry. It's all right here. However, you're going to notice if you look at the formula sheet, it is not written in plain English instructions. It's not like it doesn't tell you to find the area of a square, square the side lengths. It doesn't say it in words. Instead, it says it in the language of algebra. So you have to be good at algebra to use this GED formula sheet, and we will be practicing it. But yeah, whole first half of it is geometry, and we see some data analysis under that. That's another big thing on the GED. And then a ton of stuff about lines, functions, slopes of lines, quadratic formula, just so useful if you know how to use it. So we need to be familiar with that formula sheet. Like I said, for the geometry, we have measurements of 2D shapes, so that's perimeter and area on there. We have measurements of 3D shapes, that's surface area and volume. Pythagorean theorems on there, if you guys are familiar with that, we'll be looking at that at a later class. Tons of stuff about lines and functions, you're going to find the slope equation on there. If y'all haven't heard yet, GED's favorite topic is slope, and there's an equation on there to find the slope. Equations of lines are on there for when they ask you to write lines. Again, those data analysis questions like mean and median, and of course that quadratic equation. So super duper important, this formula sheet is going to be your bestie. If you're working on the high set or the task, they have their own formula sheets. It would be more useful to download yours and use yours. So we need the calculator and we need the formula sheet as we do what skills. What skills are we going to find on the GED? I call these the GED math biggies. Here are the most important things for you to practice, for you to study, if you wanna be successful on your GED. First one, interpreting word problems. We have got to be able to read a word problem and know what the heck they're asking us to do. So that means that you're real familiar with the basic operations. You know what it means to add, to subtract, to multiply, to divide. And I'm not saying you know how to do it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about long division. I'm talking about you know when to do it. When is it appropriate? What does it mean to divide? So that's super important. Most of the word problems on the GED are multi-step, so you need to not be intimidated when there's a lot of stuff going on and a lot to do. You need to be good at organizing your work in a word problem. They're often accompanied by graphics, so then, then we have a lot of words and we have a picture to look at, like a ton going on. They love to give you more information than you need, like information everywhere, so you have to pick out the numbers that you need for this particular scenario. So these are some really deep understanding skills. So keywords are not enough. I know there's a lot of math teachers out there who teach you like these keywords, like when you see the word more, add. <laughs> when you see this word, subtract. And, and it is not going to be enough. That method is going to fail you. We need to have a deeper understanding of word problems than that. Usually people either love word problems or they hate word problems. So I want to hear, how do you feel about word problems? Where are you guys at? Oh, Lashina hates them. Oh, Andrea likes a challenge. Alyssa says they suck. So does Amy. <laughs> and Manala is confused sometimes. Alicia's somewhere in the middle and Steven's somewhere in the middle. Okay, so we're all across the board. Next thing is algebra. And really, if you ask me what kind of a test is the GED, I would tell you it's an algebra test. We have other skills that are getting involved, but this is the biggest. This is the most important thing. So if you are the student who says when a letter gets involved, you check out, we really have got to work on this skill. We have got to get to the place where you're not intimidated by X's and Y's, uh, where you know the difference between simplifying and solving. Here are the algebra skills that come up. And don't worry if you've never heard of any of these terms, okay, you guys. But if you were Googling, like looking for examples, this is the main skills you need. You need to be able to simplify algebraic expression. So that includes some things you've probably heard of, combining like terms, distribution, all that wonderful work we have to do with polynomials, like adding, subtracting, multiplying poly polynomials. All of that falls under the umbrella of simplifying. 
You have to be able to evaluate expressions and functions. You have to be able to solve equations, linear equations and linear inequalities. You have to be able to write in my language, the language of algebra. So we're going to have to build our algebra skills if we're going to write in it. You have to be able to write expressions, equations, and inequalities. And then the dreaded quadratic equation. You will definitely have one or maybe two quadratic equations on the GED. Uh, I will review them in this class. Um, for everybody who's really stressed about the quadratic equations, you can totally pass your GED without mastering quadratic equations. It's just one or two problems. Uh, but yes, it will definitely show up on there. Now, this is actually part of algebra, but a lot of students don't realize it. So the GED loves points, lines, and functions. Points, lines, and functions. So we're talking graphing. So you'll have to know how to graph points put a point on what's called a coordinate plane like the one on the right. You'll have to be able to identify functions. So you have to know what a function is and how to tell if something is a function. You have to know slope, slope, slope. If you've been in the crash course, you know that I have like five different lessons on slope because this is such a favorite of the GED and they look at it in so many different ways. They'll look at slope from a word problem, slope from a graph, slope from a table, slope from points. I mean, just all different ways of looking at slope and then comparing those. This is something you should know very well. Graphing lines comes up as well. Can you take an equation or some information about a line and put it on the graph? Writing equations of lines. So looking at a graph or a word problem and writing the equation. And then comparing functions is another favorite that we will be looking at. Interpreting nonlinear graphs. They might have some graphs of other shapes besides lines, like graphs of quadratics, curves, all kinds of things. But the good news is the only thing you have to do is be able to look at a graph and find different points on it. You don't have to be able to graph them or know their equations. So it's a really easy level of this nonlinear graphs. Uh, next big one that's on the GED is geometry. Now, here's the deal. The GED, I told you, was an algebra test. It's not really a geometry test. There is geometry on it, but almost all the geometry on the GED is algebra-based geometry. It's those formulas from the formula sheet. So once you write down the formula, it ain't geometry no more. It's now algebra. So perimeter, we have a bunch of perimeter formulas are on the formula sheet and on the GED. The concept of area, surface area, volume, uh, and then finding missing dimensions. So you could be given any of these things. You could be given the perimeter area, surface area, or volume, and then have to use them to find missing dimensions. Again, that's an algebra skill. Or you could have uh, the Pythagorean theorem also finds missing dimensions. I'm just using the words like you guys all know what I'm talking about. But dimensions are like length, width, height. Uh, like radius is another example of a dimension. Those are all the things on a shape that are lines. You could take out your measuring tape and just measure how long it is. It's a line. So finding dimensions is probably a favorite of theirs. Uh, and then another one, and this is the only one not on the formula sheet, is the concept of scaling or similar shapes. When you take a shape and then you blow it up or shrink it down. And this is the only one not on the formula sheet. But besides that, all the rest are formula-based geometry problems. So another big one for the GED is data analysis. And I love this one because this is the one area of math where we can be studying for three tests at the same time. The concept of data analysis is on the math test, but it's also on the science and the social studies tests. Again, just like with all the other things I've been talking about so far, you will have a calculator when you do all these skills, okay? Even on the science and social studies tests. First area of data analysis is when we're looking at like statistics. And on the GED, that's just mean, median, mode, and range. Uh, interpreting charts and graphs, so bar graphs, line graphs, circle graphs, tables, percents, uh, percent increase, percent decrease. I should probably put percents and rates. And then simple counting. And a lot of students look at me like, counting, Kate? Like one, two, three? Not that kind of counting. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever seen any problems that say something like, Tico's Taco Shop offers corn and flour tortillas three kinds of meats and four kinds of salsas. How many distinct tacos could you make using one tortilla, one meat, and one salsa? That's that idea of counting. So it's a little more complex than just going one, two, three. <laughs> um, this is often called also combinations and permutations. You may have heard those words. The nice thing is this topic can get really complex, but not on the GED. They only give simple problems. 
Okay, so we won't have to go too deep into it. And then simple probability again. So probability, the likelihood that something's going to happen. And again, that one comes up on the math, but also on the science. So then there is the non-calculator section. Now, I'm a really weird teacher. Most teachers always start with the stuff on the non-calculator section because those are considered the basics of math. But because what's on the non-calculator section is so broad and can literally take years to learn, I often end with the non-calculator section. And that's what we're going to do because you can pass your GED and get none of these right. You can pass your GED with a really high score and get none of these right. So it's just not my biggest priority because I don't want to devote a whole lot of time to just a few points. But here's what's on the non-calculator section. You will have computations with decimals, fractions, and sign numbers. So yes, you will have that. One or two problems though. So we're going to memorize like 30 different algorithms for one or two problems. Don't devote all your time to one or two problems, but it is on there. <laughs> exponents and roots. Those are a favorite. They really, really love those exponents. So again, those are those little floating numbers. And the roots. Those are those radical, those checkmark houses. Um, so you'll definitely see one of or two of those that you have to do by hand. Order of operations. This is a math basic. It will come up on the non-calculator section, so you have to know it by hand, what order mathematicians work in as we're simplifying. But it also really, really, really applies to algebra. If you understand the order of operations, you're going to understand algebra a lot better with or without a calculator. So of all the things on this list, this is probably the most crucial for me, for you to understand. Undefined expressions come up there. So basically, math that can't be done. If I say it's undefined, that means there's no answer. <laughs> Nobody's defined the answer. Uh, and then absolute value and distance on a number line is on the non-calculator section as well. So when you're talking about distance on a number line, you're looking at a number line, how far apart are two things on the number line? Absolute value, if you've seen it before, are those up and down bars that look like that. And then ordering numbers, putting numbers in order, like a mixture of decimals and fractions, what's the smallest, what's the largest, ordering them. And finally, the concept of divisibility comes up. So when I'm talking divisibility, I'm talking like least common multiple, greatest common factor, um, and then a bunch of other things fall under that umbrella as well. Factors, multiples, prime numbers, etc. Again, a very wide topic that I could spend months and months with you on, but for only one problem, I'm not going to devote a whole lot of time to this. Again, algebra is more important. Not that this isn't important, I just mean for the GED. See you next time.